Hello, welcome to the Thursday, March 9th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. A few days ago, Nintendo came out with its new Switch console, and well, of course, uh, there is now a pretty intense search for possible vulnerabilities in this new toy. Probably it's almost more surprising that there is no exploit out yet after a couple of days of searching. But on the other hand, there are already a couple of smaller hints that may lead to exploitation in the future. One thing that sort of limits the attack surface of this console is that it doesn't come with a web browser, well, at least it's not advertised. There is actually a hidden web browser installed on the console, and that web browser is launched whenever the user connects to a Wi-Fi network that requires the user to log in. Many Wi-Fi networks, of course, have uh, these pages that you have to acknowledge or where you have to enter some credentials in order to connect. And for this purpose, they did install this browser, and of course, course, at that point, it's possible to exploit various browser vulnerabilities. The browser appears to be WebKit-based. WebKit has had vulnerabilities in the past, and there are probably more to go. Also, the Stage Fright library is installed on the console, so in conjunction with the browser, there may be a way to exploit it. Well, on the other hand, even if there is a vulnerability, it will be difficult to exploit. The console does use the ARM trust zone, so that's supposed to secure applications by running them in a sandbox. We'll see what's going to happen. Nintendo has put out a $20,000 bug bounty for anybody who finds vulnerabilities in this Switch console. And with more and more organizations adopting Docker in order to deliver applications, there is now a new security tool, Docker Scan, that allows you to scan your Docker images and registry for, for example, passwords that may be left inside, also extracting Docker images to analyze them further, and also get metadata information from your Docker image. For the registry, it allows you to upload files files, delete files, retrieve information about the registry, and then just uh, like your Docker client allows you to push an image. So pretty neat tool, and uh, certainly I think still a little bit under development, uh, but uh, give it a try if you're using Docker. So it's about two weeks now, I think, uh, that uh, Google demonstrated the SHA-1 collision, but still one in five websites are using SHA-1-based certificates. Now, exploits against certificates are still not quite that trivial, not easy to include that particular blob in a certificate. So definitely take a look if you're still using any SHA-1-based certificates. Really easy to do with tools like Pro, for example, or even T-Shark. Now, browser makers, for the most part, will still give you till early 2017 before the certificates are considered invalid. And of course, with yesterday's big news about the CIA leak, uh, there was a lot of focus on high-end and very complex and hard to reverse exploits. Uh, Today, Xavier, to sort of set a little bit a counterpoint here, is talking about some malware that he found that's really just the opposite. It just simply streams usernames and passwords that it finds on the system to a TCP port. So no obfuscation here, no encryption of uh, what it's doing. The only obfuscation that it's doing, if you want to call it that, is that it's calling itself chrome.exe. What this really should remind us of is that even simple malware probably still works quite well. And don't get too distracted by all the high-end and fancy malware. What's really counting is that you get those dozens of samples under control that are hitting your users every day. And if you are running the Apache Struts 2 framework, really important that you update. A couple days ago, a new vulnerability was released here in the Jakarta multi-part parser 
particular affects you if you're allowing users to upload files to your system. The exploit is trivial. All it requires is a crafted content type header with essentially the code that you would like to execute. A Metasploit module is already available for this exploit and there are exploit sightings in the wild. So update struts too. I know it's not always easy. You should be at least on 2.3.32 or on 2.5.10.1. Well, this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.